this trick is gonna blow your friggin' mind. Let's hop into Fusion. All right, guys, here's what I got so far. I have my solid body model with my bill on it. I used uh, the forms interface, but that doesn't really matter. But what does matter here is the sequence of events. So I've modeled my body, added the lip before I've done anything else. Combine those two bodies together so I have basically a solid body with no holes and the lip with no holes. Then I've gone back into the forms interface and added another body inside. I just used a quad ball and I sized it kind of randomly, you know, kind of, uh, I know what I'm kind of doing. The big thing here is you wanna make sure that you're leaving enough space on the sides so you don't get like too thin of a wall or anything like that. For those that don't know, you just click on modify, click a form, click a face, sorry, and um, modify and you can move it out here. I'll link to a video from uh, Yank Outdoors. Yank, 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 his name's Goya. He's my fishing buddy, who is a way better forms interface user in Fusion than I am to give you that kind of all the nitty gritty details, but this is just the basic stuff right here, super basic. So you might be asking yourself, bro, what are you doing? We're gonna use Fusion 360 and ChatGPT to figure out whether this lure is gonna sink or float. And that's pretty sick. Okay, so now I have my two bodies in place. My lure body and my air pocket body. I haven't cut them out yet. Don't worry about that yet. We're gonna do some magic first. So what we wanna do is we wanna go into Fusion and set the properties of both of these bodies. So what we wanna do is we wanna go in and set the physical material of both of these bodies. If you've never used physical material before, it's kinda magic. And basically it just tells Fusion what your object that you're modeling is made out of and it has all of these attributes. Now you can go in and you can put in your own specific details for your own specific resin, but what I found is, is they don't vary that much, uh, at least not enough that it makes, uh, appears to me to make a big difference. So Fusion has a built-in one called thermoplastic resin and that's what we're gonna use. So you come over here, Fusion 360 Material Library, you go to Plastic, Thermoplastic Resin. Boop. I'm just, I'm just dragging that and dropping it on there. So that's cool. And now that's our body. Now this is our air pocket. So we're gonna make it air. Scroll back up to the top, find gas. And the first one's air. Now this gets a little difficult because it's gonna turn like basically invisible, but that's cool. Okay, so now we got both of these things set. Now, here comes the magic. I have a chat GPT window open up over here and we're gonna use it to make the calculation. Now, I didn't figure this out. If you've watched Frank over at Engineer Angling Lure, he has the math background to do this kind of on his whiteboard. I don't, and for me, that's too much work, bro. Cause he has to measure the density of his wood and all that kind of stuff. And the other thing to keep in mind is this lure is obviously made of resin cause I'm 3D printing it and it wants to sink by default. If you're using something like wood, I think this same process would work, uh, but it obviously is gonna wanna float. So you wouldn't necessarily need that air pocket. You probably want actual weights, but we'll do that in a minute. And then Additionally, I was shown this technique by a gentleman by the name of uh, Sankit. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly on uh, Instagram. Give him a follow. He makes some cool lures. He's an actual engineer as well. And he told me how to kind of get this data out of Fusion 360. And um, then again, do kind of the calculations by hand. I took notes. He, he was super kind and jumped on a Zoom call with me. I took notes and uh, promptly kind of forgot some critical steps. Then I was thinking, wait a minute, chat GPT can probably do this for me because it's a computer, it's good at math. So let's give it a shot. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. New chat GPT window. This will work, I think in a free version, I, I pay, but there's no real difference here. So all I'll do is type in, I'm making a fishing lure, I don't know if it'll sink, float, or suspend in fresh water. Below are the details of the lure and the air pocket I am adding. Now I don't need to tell it what kind of material it is because we're gonna get that out of Fusion, but I do need to weigh the hardware I'm gonna put on there and see how much that weighs. All right, 22.2 grams. 
All right, so I'm gonna be adding 22.2 grams of steel hardware to the lure. I'm hitting shift and return, and now let's get this data out of Fusion. So now I can come over here to my baby wake, right click and go to properties. It's gonna bring up this whole big old thing. We got center of mass, we got all of this stuff here. So what I wanna do is copy that to the clipboard, click okay, go back to my Chrome window, and I'm just gonna type in fishing lure details and then I'm gonna say air pocket details go back over into fusion right click on my air pocket go to properties copy to clipboard come back over here and paste this in now that should be it let's see what it says it's gonna go through a bunch of extra stuff which I think is kind of cool but at the end, it'll spit out what we want. Like, this is all math I don't want to do. All right, so now it's going to sink, right? In the specifications and added steel hardware, it will sink in fresh water. Okay, now if you want it to sink, that's fine. I want this one to float. So now, I'm going to ask it, how big do I need to make that air pocket? All right, let's see what it says. This is crazy math. All right, so it needs to be greater than that. 23,961. So let's just call it... 24,000 millimeters squared. All right, so let's hop back over here. If I into Fusion, right click, go to Properties, and you can see right now we're only at 12,000 millimeters square. 1,200 millimeters square. It needs to be a lot bigger. All right, so let's go back and edit this form. Click modify, let's bring this down a whole bunch. And really I'm not doing much thinking here. I'm just trying to make sure that we're staying in side of the lure and I'm getting enough wall thickness okay we can actually check that right here real quick so we finish form now we can right click on our air pocket and go to properties again and only at 2900 something is wrong here because there's no way there's no way that would sink okay i made a, a huge mistake here um I had my scale set to grains or GN, whatever that is, instead of grams. So I'm only adding 1.41 grams. So let's change that. Ooh, I even type them. So I'm just asking, I've changed, told it I've changed the weight of my hardware and ask it to recalculate. And it's gonna recalculate basically the size of the air pocket. I think. All right, it needs to be 3171. That sounds more like it. Let's see what we are, where we are right now. We're at 2938. So we're pretty close. I I'm gonna say that we're probably still float in this case, but um, we can go in here and I can probably just pull this down just a touch. You know, I wish there was a way to get like a real-time readout. That'd be pretty sick, but um, since I've added that bill there, that's probably where the weight is. So I'm gonna move the weight kind of up under this bill a little bit more. You want to leave a bunch of material here and in the tail and in the belly where you're going to be adding that hook. Properties, yep. And now I am at 3298, which is bigger than 3171, which ChatGTP says I need. So we're floating. Now let's see if this actually works in the real world. Let's print this bad boy out. Okay, so you can do a lot of different things here to compensate for too small of an air pocket. Uh, this lip is probably a little too thick. I could add a fillet to either side of it, um, make it thinner, push it further up into the body. There's a lot of different things I could do. Use different hardware. So you can either expand the air pocket size or decrease the mass of the fishing lure. I think that's obvious, but I just want to say that. And also you notice I left a lot of material at the tail, that's gonna probably give it a little bit of a, a um, back weighting, so to speak. Let's see if ChatGPT 
chat GPT can tell me that. So first I'm gonna put the updated air pocket dimensions in there. I didn't change the size of the body. So how will this lure float in the water, i.e. rear down, flat, or nose down? I've never actually asked it this question before, so let's see what it says. Because it has the center of gravity for both of these things, so it should be able to position them relative to each other. I think, yeah, it's calculating a new center of mass, basically. And that's important because I haven't removed that air pocket from the Fusion 360 body yet, you know, using combine with cut. All right, so it says, Distribution of mass will float with the rear down and the nose slightly up. Exact tilt depends on the precision placement of the hardware, but significant buoyancy from the air pocket will keep the lure from sinking entirely. All right. And that makes sense from what I'm seeing. Let's see how it floats in real life. So what we're going to want to do now is actually remove that air pocket or make that air pocket into the lure by removing, cutting and combining them, you know. So I just click combine, my baby wake is my body, my tool body is my air pocket, and I'm going to cut it, and I'm gonna keep the tool around. Don't need to, really probably extra. It's just my OCD. All right, so we unclick the air pocket, and now you can see we have a hollow lure. So let's make the holes for the hardware. Right. When we're 3D printing it, we want to always make sure that we have pre, um, they're not drilled, but there's holes in the lure to put our hardware in. It makes things super duper easy because if you're drilling when you're 3D printing, you're doing something wrong. Oh, but before we do that, let's do something else real cool. If you uh, right click, or no, excuse me, click on the baby wake body, go to inspect and look at center of mass. Uh, make sure you have that selected there. Click on OK. You get this little dot there. Now, center of mass and center of gravity are technically not the same thing, but for our purposes here, they basically are, right? We're not launching rockets into space or anything. We're making fishing lures. So if you want to put some weight right at the center of the, of the lure to make sure that it, it's falling appropriately, um, this is where you would put it. Line it up right here. And that helps even out stuff. All right, so now let's uh, create a sketch. Boom. Now another thing with 3D printing is we want to make sure that we actually can um, vent out the chamber in here, right? If we leave a chamber, if, if we leave a hollow pocket in the middle of a 3D print, there will be leftover resin that's stuck in there and that will eventually cause your lure to explode because that resin will sit in there and I don't know if it continues to cure or just eats away at the existing resin or something weird happens in there and they basically end up exploding. We don't want that. So you always like an in and an out because we're actually going to shoot some IPA through there. So I guess we could line this one up on the center of gravity. That's actually probably a pretty good spot. I'm just putting one hook on this guy because he's pretty small. I wonder if you can, can you project that? No. I wish you could use that center of mass as an actual like anchor point. That'd be pretty sick, but I guess you can't. We'll line it up as good as we can. Boom and boom. Not gonna put one on the tail. Should I put one on the tail? Now, adding a tail, you know, I didn't calculate any hardware for the tail. It's, again, it's probably not heavy enough to matter in this case because we, we have our air pocket that's significantly bigger than we need. But you know what? I'm going to leave it off for now. All right, I'm going to use pipe tool. Boom. And I want these to be 1.8 just because I know um, you would measure yours out, obviously. This thing is actually really small. I didn't realize I made it this small. Let's turn back on the sketch. Okay. Man, this thing is little, bro. So I should have paid attention. And then we're just going to fill up these bad boys because we can. All right. I'm not going to make any eye sockets or anything like that. Um, I did weigh the eyes. They were part of the, the weight I added. Um, but I'll just stick them on, maybe, if I put them on at all. 
So the other thing to do when you're printing a 3D print with a, a void in the middle is um, when it's printing, it goes down onto the FEP. And if there's a cavity up here, it actually creates a vacuum with like pulling forces. So we can either orient our print to where we have a, a drain hole that's already here. We can use one of these, uh, which we could probably do if we print it um, upside down with this stuff facing the build plate. Uh, but I don't like to do that, especially with this front facing face, because that is going to be um, kind of the control plane, right? So the water is going to be flowing over this. I want that to try to keep that as smooth as possible. So actually, I think in this case, it does make sense for us to add a, another hole in the back, even if we don't use it for hardware, we can um, use it for draining. And then we'll just uh, fill it up with some UV resin. I'll make that one a little smaller. 1.2, doesn't need to be that big. All right, there we go. Let's print it. All right, this seems a lot smaller than I thought. That's the problem I always run into when I do sculpting instead of um, actual, you know, lofts and stuff like that. So let's put in the hardware. I'm going to seal up our little vent hole in the back there. Actually, it looks pretty sealed up, but let's just make sure. Just a little dab of the UV cure. that with the light just trying to plug the hole here I'm not trying to make a super solid lure at this point just want to see if the AI was correct about how it would float <laughs> all right this is a stupidly large hook like I said when I was designing I was just like I was too excited about the AI I totally spaced on actually making a reasonably sized lure but <laughs> that's so so funny dude so funny but we're just worried about if it floats or not and if it floats tail down head up so let's check it out all right the moment of truth here it goes that is a ridiculous hook whoa look at that bro now i will say it's not floating like totally tail down this slightly tail down but we are floating nonetheless pretty sweet bro all right, guys, I think that's like, I don't know, man, mind blowing to me. Just amazing that feeding that information into the chat GPT can give you that kind of clarity. And again, I don't think it's going to be like 100% correct because there's a lot of little variables in there. So if you're trying to get something to like perfectly suspend, I think that's going to be difficult. But a suspend and a slow sink probably totally easily doable and making sure it floats when you want to float totally easily doable sinking is easy you just make it solid but yeah guys if there's anything you want me to try to figure out with that technique let me know i gotta go back and redo this lure and uh take care tight lines